How is it going, nerders? Scott the Mass Nerder here, bringing you the breakdown to our last Game Changers. And if you haven't seen that Game Changers, you need to watch it before you watch this video. So there's an annotation on the screen, and it's the first link in the description. Make sure you click it, check out that video first, and the description explains it. But what this is, is pretty much just a series where I can spice up and my live commentaries and probably some of the other videos as well. It's a way where I find a moment, a Game Changer, a moment in the game where... A different action maybe could have changed the outcome of the game or the outcome of that situation. And I put it up on the screen. I wait a little bit, let get your results, and then I come back and we analyze it. You know, what did you guys think? And maybe I can learn something and you can learn something and the other viewers can learn something. So it's a way for us all to collaborate. And I feel like the more I really analyze my gameplay, I sort of realize, hmm, I, I could have done that. I could have done something different. And sometimes I hear ideas from you guys and they can be really great ideas that, you know, I never even thought about. So I feel like it's a great way for us to collaborate and we can all gain from it. So here is a clip from the actual last Game Changer video. So what we're going to do is pause it right here and we're going to discuss this first topic here. Can you think of a better move for Nick? And you can't really understand what was going on even though I showed you a little bit of it without watching the video. So you really you need to check out the other one to, to get the most benefit out of this video and to, to really feel a part of it. And, and I am going to try to keep it short, keep it quick. I, I know I tend to drag things out. But really, we were just discussing, it was a game where me and Nick were pretty much playing on our own. The rest of our teammates were sniping and we weren't communicating with them against a defense who was playing tight on this building. So what I first want to do is just quickly discuss this building. You see on your screen now, all this yellow, that is just showing you how good this building is for defense. All those yellow areas are areas the defense can be aiming at us. That means I really have to be focusing on a lot of places at once, especially on multiple levels. You have to adjust your sights up and down, left and right. And you can sort of get distracted. You see two targets and you sort of start uh, shifting between them, struggling. Who, who am I going to shoot at? You know, your targets are differing. It can be pretty difficult. So it is a very good building for defense. They're playing tight on the objective. And we were struggling, just two of us, to really make a move on it. And as you see sort of popping on your screen, these are the comments you guys left. This is the feedback you gave me for this first game changer. Now, in most episodes, I'm not going to be able to highlight all of you. I'm just going to take one or two that I think are really accurate. But this time I figured, let's get you all in there, show you all how I plan to do it, show the comments that you guys left, because they are good, and some of the things you brought up, maybe I wasn't actually thinking. So for this one, my first thought sort of agrees with Mama of yours and Mr. the Puppy. They both sort of said, Nick should spawn somewhere else. That was my first idea when I was watching this video, so let's flip into our overhead and talk about that real quick. As we get into our overhead, you see the building highlighted in red. That is where all the defenders are. The green guy on the right, that's me hiding behind my truck. And let's just talk about if Nick was to spawn somewhere else, because spawning on me when the enemies are already focused on me, these arrows represent that, it was pretty tough, we didn't have much cover and we're advancing on a fortified area. So Nick could have just came from deployment and taken this wide left route, which is a route we already tried taking, but now that their attention is deferred to me, it could be more beneficial, or heck, he could have just came straight through and tried to get up on him. This would have done one of a few things. I mean, at the very least, he'd get up there and at least shift a little bit of their attention toward him, taking a little bit off me, represented by that arrow turning. But in other situations, I mean, he could kill multiple of them, which would mean we don't have as much opposition and I can advance freely. Or he could kill all of them and we could get the plan. Either way, it takes a little bit of the pressure off me and gives me a chance to get up to better cover and to really be able to assist him to get that objective. But there were two other ideas that I actually wasn't thinking about as much. And the zombie pimps in Levero 1993 sort of had this to say. And they thought, okay, well, if Nick did spawn on you, what could he do? And in the actual game, he did spawn on me. And then from there, he tried to do what I was doing. And that's just trying to make a push slowly through cover, even if the cover was truck, making that push up to the objective. But what he could have done is maybe fallen back and take the route I tried to take initially with the smoke up on the top of your screen. Or he could have came down the bottom using the office over there for cover and then taken any of those two routes I just showed you on the left. So if he's already in me, rather than advancing as we were really struggling with that push, fall back, take some other routes. Now, no way am I calling Nick out because I wasn't thinking about this in the heat of the game either. I was like, get on me. Let's, I need some help. I need some help. But it just shows sometimes when you need help, you don't actually need it right beside you. You can get help from the other side. And now we're going to quickly jump right into Game Changer 2, and that is me and Nick just sort of pulled off a successful flank around the enemy, and the enemy is pushed up far on our side. So I just want to take a quick pause before we go any farther and bring up one comment. JWBezel1, hope I'm saying that right. His first comment, the first part of his comment is what I really want to focus on right now, and that's you should have first made sure the whole upstairs were clear. So I'm not showing him quite yet, but 
When I advance, I'm going to go straight for the stairs and not look to my right. That is one thing that would have taken maybe seconds, and I would now know the whole upstairs is clear, and then I could still come right back to the back, go down the way I'm going right now with Nick covering me, and we could have been successful. So now, as I go for the arm, look what I do here. Do you notice something right on this screen? As multiple people pointed out, JW and, as we see here, Geiger's 40. I hope I'm saying that right, because I used to call him Ginger. <laughs> It's that I'm not checking the other side. There's a window to my right just outside the screen that is a beautiful place for the enemy to camp, peek in, and aim at me. Now it's only one window, and I was really confident the enemy was pushed up really far attacker side, but taking those two steps to clear upstairs and clear this window would have really just secured my safety and made sure if one of the enemies stayed back, we'd be safe. And in this one, I'm not going as in-depth as I would in the first one, just because it doesn't require the in-depth. It was simply, I didn't clear all my corners, and that's something we should always be doing. So I really hope you all enjoyed Game Changer. It's a fun little thing just to spice it up and give me a chance to analyze my gameplay, and gives you guys a chance to analyze some of the decisions my teammates and I make. So hopefully we'll be doing more soon. Happy gaming, everyone.